stick around to the end of this video for a chance to win a free t-shirt. So we've been getting better at taking noon sights with the sextant. So the goal is to be within 25 miles radius of where you are. So pretty much when you take the noon sight, you could be anywhere within 50 miles of where you actually are. Which doesn't sound too accurate, but that's the goal. If you can do within that, you're considered pretty good. I just did our noon sight and north to south, I was off by 6.3 miles and east west, I was off by four miles. So pretty close. So it's, it's pretty sweet. That was an adventure, and now we're through it. Didn't take long at all.
we're out here crossing the Atlantic Ocean, I thought today would be a really good time to talk about sail plans and how they relate to seaworthiness and your ability to weather a storm more comfortably. Now, right now, we are currently flying our staysail and our trysail. And to some people, that might just be different fancy names for sails. So we're going to go through all the different sail plans between cutters and sloops. And then we're also going to talk about a staysail and a trysail and how they work better than a staysail and a third reef or a storm jib and a third reef. So the first thing that you need to understand when it comes to sail plans is sails are pretty much the motor of the boat. And if the motor is out of balance, it's not going to run very well. A really simple way to think of it is imagine that you are the sail and it's really windy. And it's so windy that you have trouble even walking outside because the wind's trying to push you over. So in situations like that, you tend to like ball up and kind of like huddle into the wind, right? If you were standing out there and put your arms out really far, you, you just get taken away with the wind. So the sails work in a similar fashion. You have sails towards the front of the boat, which are going to pull the bow down with the wind. And then you're going to have sails at the back of the boat, which would be the main sail. And those are going to push the back of the boat downwind. So when you have the two of these pushing down, they're going to make the boat go forward. If one of them is too strong or in the wrong place, it's going to overpower the other one. And instead of moving forward like you'd like under a lot of control, it's going to be kind of haphazard and reckless. So let's go over some pretty common sail plans. So the two most popular sail plans that you'll find on modern production boats are either going to be sloops or cutters. Now, there's some nitpicky definitions about what makes a boat a sloop versus a cutter, but for the ease of simplicity, we're just going to take it as two head sails as a cutter and one head sail is a sloop. Now in light airs, when you're full sail, there's really not a whole lot of difference where the sails are because they still fill up the whole triangle just the same. Now when the wind starts picking up, you're going to reef, and reefing is the act of making your sails smaller. So as you make your sails smaller, they're going to move more into the direction that they come from. So your mainsail originates at the bottom of the mast here. So as you make your sail smaller, it's going to work its way to that area. Your headsail, it originates on the front of your headstay. So this is taking into account that you have roller furling because most sloops have roller furling. And then as you make your headsail smaller, it's gonna move forward a little. So at your first reef, there's not too much of a difference. And then at third reef, where you have a tiny little mainsail and it's just a little scrap of cloth sticking out there and your teeny tiny little headsail you can see that the sails are really bunched forward so your headsail is going to be pulling the bow downwind with a lot of force and a lot of leverage because it's so far forward while your mainsail is too far forward to actually counteract it so that's a sloop as you reef down now a cutter as you reef down you reef the main and you can reef your headsail and that's going to move the main a little forward and the headsail a little forward as well. But you still have your staysail, which is right in front of the mast, so it's still kind of keeping everything close together. The wind picks up even more, and you go to your second reef. So now the mainsails come in quite a bit towards the mast, and you drop your headsail completely. So your headsail is furled away completely, but your staysail is right there. So now you have your mainsail real close to the mast and your staysail real close to the mast. So you're kind of like balling up together. And then it picks up even more. It's blowing really hard. Now you're flying your third reef and you reef your staysail as well. Now it's all really close, really huddled up in the middle of the boat. So that means that the force on the boat is pretty balanced and you're able to sail quite comfortably in some really, really bad weather that you'd rather not be sailing in at all. So this is just a real quick comparison between a third reef to mainsail. So you have your mast and your boom and the mainsail's on it. And then you have your trysail and your mast and your boom. Now a trysail is simply another sail that you put up in lieu of your main. So what you do is you actually drop the mainsail completely and then the trysail simply flies just above the mainsail. So the mainsail is packed all the way down and it's just riding up here and it doesn't use the boom. Its sheet actually runs all the way to the back of the boat and attaches to a really strong point and is led to a winch. So a couple things happen here. When it's blowing really hard, you're stressing your sails a lot, and you're actually risking that your sail rips. And if you're a sailboat and you depend on your sails to make a long distance voyage, you can't afford to have a ripped sail. So what you do in those situations is you remove the mainsail completely. 
if you put up a trisole, there's zero stress on your main. So after the storm passes, you can put your main sail back up, and it's like nothing ever happened. The other advantage of the trisole is it doesn't use a boom. So when you're sailing with the boom, you know you have to be careful when you're going downwind because of jiving. When it's blowing really hard, the forces are extreme on these sails, and it might not be physically possible for you to do it in a controlled manner, and there's going to be a lot of banging and a lot of stress on your equipment. So, let alone the fact that it's really dangerous to the crew that's near this thing while it's happening, it's also really hard on your boat. Now, if you're using your trisail, there's no boom. So, as you need the jibe, it's simply like jibing a headsail. You just pass it from one winch to the other, and you continue on your merry way. The other huge advantage is, say, you have the boom eased out really far, and the boat's being heeled over, and it's just it's too much wind. If your boom hits the water while you're going really fast, you actually run the risk of snapping your boom. So the tip of the boom is going to hit the water and have so much resistance pushing it back while you have your sail pulling it forward. And that twisting motion is just going to bend it and buckle it. And right there you lost your boom, so your main sail is pretty worthless at this point. Now, to counteract that issue, a lot of times when you reef, the clue of the reefed main sail is actually set higher to raise your boom. That way, as you heel over, it's less likely to hit the water. But it's still a thing that can happen. Now, if you're using your trisole, your main stays uh, tied in the middle. The boom is sitting there happy. It's like it's almost in storage, not even being used. And your trisole just flops around one way or the other, wherever you need it. And there's no stress on any of your gear that's involved in flying your mainsail. I hope this discussion of mainsail versus trisail and cutter versus sloop has helped shed some light on different sail plans. Because sail plans are pretty fundamental to sail boats themselves, it's what they rely on. Now this only talked about single masted boats, so sloops and cutters. We did not talk about cat boats, and we didn't go into multi mast where you have catches, yawls, and schooners. Those are a whole different animal, and uh, they have a lot more sails to deal with. So. It allows them a lot more uh, versatility when it comes to reefing and balancing everything out, but sadly they're not a very common production boat these days. So when you go to buy a new boat, you're probably going to be looking at a sloop or a cutter. Uh, we are doing this outside because inside it is very difficult and also I've been getting seasick so um, but this is working so far <laughs> Just like that, we have Maddie's pasta salad. <laughs> Quick and easy meal. We have some very, very good news. Today is June 24th and the weather finally went normal. So the standard way for the weather in the Atlantic area, in the North Atlantic, there's a high pressure system called the Azores High. So the Azores are over here, and in this area, it'll be about 1,030 millibars. And then radiating out from this will be a nice big swoop. And it's a high pressure system that sits over the North Atlantic, and it creates the trade winds and everything. So the winds flow down, over, up, and back. It's this nice big gyre that if you want to go anywhere, you hop on it and then it takes you around like a carousel and you get wherever you want to go. Now that's been the normal way. For some reason this year, that which usually forms late April, early May, formed today. So up until then what we've had is the high pressure of the Azores high over here and then another weird high pressure with a bunch of gales in it looming in this area. So we've been like snaking our way across south, trying to get past the weird one, hop onto the Azores High's conveyor belt, and then ride it up to the Azores. But 
everything's back to normal. So now we're going to plot a real course where we will get from here to there, riding the Azor High on the 1020. I'll also make a little loaf of bread as well to have bread for tomorrow. Maddie wants to do French toast in the morning. And the bad news is that Dill, our drifter, ripped. So the leech line chafed on the top of the cap shrouds and came out. This week we are promoting our Rigging Doctor shirt, I'd Rather Be Sailing. It's an original design by me. You can find this shirt and all of our other swag in the Rigging Doctor Teespring page, which can be found in the link in our description. But today we have something special for you, a chance to win this shirt for free. All you have to do is come up with the best caption for this photo and write it in the comments section of this video. Best of luck and fair winds. And while you're at it, don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and message us directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.